Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of a Frugal Athlete Podcast. Today, we got a very special guest, Quentin Williams, uh, someone who we were supposed to have at the end of last year, but we're both busy people, and we were able to get him this week. Uh, first and foremost, Quentin is someone that's very respected in the sports business, personal development, uh, mental clarity space, and I'm excited to have him on because, as you guys know, uh, when it comes to finance, there's a lot more than just knowing the numbers. It's a behavioral and emotional thing. And uh, with Quentin, we're going to learn all about that and more. Uh, but without further ado, Quentin, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, MLB, man. It's great to be here and just chop it up with you, man. I think this is such an important topic. And the fact that you're talking about how mindset and finance and career moves really interplay, I think it's, it's a perfect combination, man. It's great. No, most definitely. And, and once again, thank you for making time to come on. So let's get right into it. You know, who is Quentin Williams? Man, so I'm a retired athlete. I played, um, you know, football and baseball actually in college at Northwestern in the Big Ten. And I transitioned into not really sure what I wanted to do afterwards. Yeah. Like I knew I wanted to start a business, which took me almost 10 years to finally go and do. Um, but I was, I didn't really have like the roadmap for how I'd go and do that or what was going to be my way of doing it. And when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's, it's, you can probably relate to this. Like it's, it's a lot like, um, I don't know what else is, it is, is it really like, there's nothing comparable to there's it. There's nothing it's, compared to it. You're it, right. It, it's Maybe like sports. you're thrown out and yeah, you're, it's not like sports. It's, yeah. it's a complete opposite in a lot of ways. Right. Um, there's, there's no real rule book or how yeah. to do things. There's not many people really guiding you or giving you that, you know, that structure in your calendar of like when to do what. And yeah. as someone who struggled a lot with, um, kind of always being on as an athlete, you know, managing two sports, like I was best when I was busy. Yeah. Right. Um, I struggled mentally after sport. Like I was both confused about like, you know, how was I going to go and like start a business or what was it going to look like? But I was also struggling with post concussion syndrome. Mm -hmm. So I got really passionate about the concussion problem because not only was I going through it, but I watched a lot of my former teammates have a lot of issues with, with, yeah. with their, their mental clarity. Um, you've heard of all the suicides, right? Through CTE. Yeah. And as I really researched it and really understood it more myself, um, I realized that it was much more of a mental battle than a, in like a emotional awareness, emotional intelligence battle and life setup battle that guys really hadn't prepared for. And, um, you know, you can do, you can only do so much about the brain, right? Biologically, yeah. chemically, right? I'd like to focus more on the mental side and um, help guys really, you know, let up their life and the, the scoreboard beyond sports. So, um, it was a, a long time coming, but I started my business about two and a half years ago, and I've been able to support, you know, former NFLers, former um, college players, just a bunch of elite athletes that, um, you know, through group programming, one-on-one -on -one coaching. This is just like what I love doing. I, I just love trying to fit in and really, you know, solve this issue of like mental health beyond sport. No, that's what it's all about. Now, can you talk about, you know, you, you said you mentioned it took you 10 years to get into the, you know, make the leap to entrepreneurship and there's nothing like it. You know, you've done sports at the highest of levels, uh, but entre entrepreneurship, what did you do before that? Oh, so I, I served. So right out of school, I did one year at um, a startup that actually focused on concussion management for kids and mm -hmm. youth sports. It's great. Just didn't work out. Uh, mm -hmm. It was not. It didn't go anywhere. Um, so I got a really comfortable job. I needed like some sort of stable income for a little while, and so I got a job with a friend at Grubhub. I did corporate account management, and I saw the ladder and I started chasing it. You know, yeah. knowing knowing darn well like I was gonna get out and do something on my own. Like I even told my my first boss, I was like, "You can hire me, but I'm gonna be out of here in a year." You know, and she was <laughs> like, "That's totally cool." Um, <laughs> And, and then I stuck around for six years because, you know, I kept kind of losing confidence in myself. You know, I just mm -hmm. didn't see the the road in front of me. I couldn't see that brick underneath my foot when I was going to make that risk because, yeah. you know, for all sorts of reasons. But, yeah, it took me six years and I did corporate account management for 
at Grubhub in the tech world, which was great experience. Um, and then uh, left that job about a year ago. Well, congratulations, because it's hard to take that leap. You know, a lot of times people struggle, but let's get into what you do now. You talked about mental clarity. I want you to talk about the world-class method. I mean, you're selling yourself short. You went to Northwestern, which is a top program. <laughs> so you're doing academics at a high level and you're playing football and baseball. So you know what it means to be world-class. What is your methodology of what a world-class method looks like? Yeah, man, thanks for asking. I, I think that when I really think about what made me you know, world-class in that, right? First off, like a lot of things were working, right? But a lot of like I was doing too much. Like I didn't I didn't have time for a social life. I didn't have yeah. time to really explore myself outside of sport. And so when I finally gave up baseball after two years in college, it was like the world opened up for me a little bit, you know? Yeah. I still had to go to class and get good grades and like, you know, like I, I took school really seriously. It's why I went to Northwestern. But um, you know when I really thought about like what makes a successful transition so you can feel world-class outside of sport, uh, for me, it was understanding two main things, which is who you are and where you're going. I call it your core identity, who you are without sport, without the titles, without the accolades or the things. Um, just who are you and what makes you you? I think a lot of, you know, I, I think when your identity is caught up in sport and the, you know, everything that comes with that, I think that we can sometimes lose ourselves, and so figuring out who you are and then figuring out where you want to go um like what you really want what's authentic to you as a human being not just what society recommends or or would prescribe um you know i'm not saying everyone should go and be an entrepreneur i think that some people are are, are best suited in that team environment and that corporate structure right mm -hmm. um but maybe it is entrepreneurship maybe it is fighting for something that you really believe in so figuring out and cultivating what that is and where you want to go is is huge. Um, the next few things are um, kind of your habits. That's the third piece of like the uh, of my five you know kind of pillars. Um, what are your habits? What are what are the ways that you're challenging yourself and getting you out of your comfort zone constantly? Because if we don't, you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. There's nothing in between. Oh, I like that. Oh, green and growing, ripe and rotting. Yeah, man. Like. You know, you, you pick it up from the tree, like it starts rotting, you know, <laughs> it's either on the tree, continue to grow and, and you have that growth mindset or you better eat it quick, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, a lot. So, that's, a, that's a game changer. Yeah, man, it's 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 true. So like in order to grow, I think that through habit and constantly being in action, uncomfortable action, that's how we grow. It's how we get in the flow. Um, flow is produced by getting stretching 4% outside of our comfort zone consistently. Um, you could probably read like James Clear and Atomic mm -hmm. Habits. He talks about the habit of like 1% better every day. I don't think you can't get better without challenging yourself emotionally, you know? Yeah. And so the, the last few pillars really cover like the emotional side, the relationship side. Like how are you leading vulnerably and openly with your heart and actually understanding who you are and putting that out there? I think relationships are really what makes our world go round. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that, you know, uh, relationships are currency um i'd love to hear your perspective on that obviously but like i i think how we relate to one another how we listen how we show up in a relationship is absolutely huge and we got to be vulnerable we gotta we gotta put ourselves out there we gotta stand for who we are and what we believe in right it's it's yeah. one thing to write it down in your journal it's another to go out and present it you know um so yeah that that pretty much encom encompasses my world-class method um yeah, and it's 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 been just really really dope to see people take on that new version of themselves. Often it's kind of, it's really a version of themselves that they knew before sport before sports came in. Mm -hmm. I ask people like, what were you like, or who were you before sports came around and said like, come on, let's go. Yeah, you know, like, I feel like that. I feel like that world class mentality that you talk about those pillars are what makes athletes great at their sport. And then they yeah. get so intertwined with the sport that they forget that's what makes them great as human beings. So yeah. I love that initial pillar where you're asking who you are outside of your sport. You know, I talk to guys all the time and I'm like, yo, can you give yourself an ele elevator pitch? And you can't mention the sports you play. And right. some guys trip up, you know, they're like, oh, wait, oh, yeah. no. But the, but the ones that have an identity outside of sport, I feel like, and you can attest to this because uh, this is your 
you know, this is your lane. They're they're free. They play they play like more free. I feel like they do. Yeah, they really do, man. Yeah, I mean, and you you, you there's tons of examples of this. We could we could call it the Tom Brady's. We could call. Um, all these different people like Russell Wilson, you know, has a, mm-hmm. has a personal development company outside of his, uh, outside of his work. Like, I think knowing who you are allows you to play more effectively. Yeah. And I'm, I'm finally starting to work with some current athletes and I'm really excited. Um, I'm partnering with, um, athlete soul. You probably know me. Right oh now. yeah. I love them. Yeah. And we're, we're working with some current, you know, college and pro athletes, Olympians even, on preparing for you know su- to succeed beyond sport as they're playing mm-hmm. and i'm really excited to see if we can show like some statistical improvement with how they engage with their team how they lead how they orient themselves in their team and how that shows up as wins and losses like i'm really really pumped about that because there's not a lot of data on that like yeah, yeah. but I- i've always said and this is that th- this is part of my method really it's it's being able to be kind of a cross trainer, you know, like, I really believe that playing football and playing baseball made me a both a better baseball and football player. For sure. You know, I don't think I don't think I really realized that back then. But by playing both, I was able to take one things that I was learning in one and kind of apply them. Yeah, and vice versa. Um, I mean, I was a tight end in high school and like I could adjust on a football because yeah. I was an outfielder in baseball and I had to be able to adjust on a fly ball that yeah. could go anywhere. You know what I mean? A football's <laughs> going straight, but a baseball will, will spin on you. And so like those cross training capabilities, they also show up, I think mindset wise, when you know who you are and you don't, mm-hmm. you're not relying on your sport for your affirmation or your worth. If yeah. you can come to that place where you don't need the sport, it's kind of like being in a relationship where like you don't need the person to complete you but you choose it anyways. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that's a really strong place to be in. That's that's where true, I think, mental wellness comes from. Relationship wellness mm-hmm. is when you feel complete when you step on that field or into that relationship. Yeah. You know? That's a great that's a great segue because you talk about cross-training. You, you talk about being complete. And, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times, obviously, we're trying to change the stigma around athletes and their transition. But a lot of times, they don't feel complete outside of the sport. And mm-hmm. it affects, as we're going to get into, the mm-hmm. money, the mm-hmm. career transition, the relationships. So talk about it from your perspective and your expertise. Where is that correlation? How can we get better to be smarter with our money just by yeah. simply understanding ourselves? Um, because a lot of times people don't understand money is a behavior thing, first and foremost, before mm-hmm. understanding the basics. What is yeah. your relationship with money? Um, and before that, you got to understand what's your relationship with your wealth, uh, sorry, with yeah. yourself, how do you view yeah. money, then what's your relationship with money, and then now you got to learn the basics. Yeah, this is so cool because, you know, I don't talk about money a lot, mm-hmm. um, but I love the conversation. It's it's one of those things like, you know, like politics, sex, and money, I think we should yeah. all talk about them because, like, they're part of our lives. And I think when we start to talk about it and open up about it, there's so much strength that comes from that because we get to learn, you know? Mm-hmm. The same way with emotions, like that's, that's why I focus so much on the emotional self yeah. when I coach. Like I think that those are what makes us authentic, and it's information for us. When we share that part of ourselves, we know where to go. We know if someone else is sharing their perspective, I can learn from them. Same thing goes with money. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're talking about money with your with your with your loved ones, with people that you respect and like, you can learn so much. But this topic of money is really deeply intertwined with mindset. I think you're spot on because um, in my experience, a lot of athletes, um, like I mentioned that seven-year-old boy, right? Mm-hmm. That learned like for me, like, oh, I'm bigger than everybody. I can play football pretty good. I have an arm that's better than anybody else in the field. Like yeah. I didn't even know that until I was seven and I stepped on a field with other people. When I learned that, like what had it gone on in that boy's life? You know what I mean? What yeah. what had transpired in that boy's childhood? Um, and what was going on maybe seven through 18 before I left the house? What was going on then too? And how have I reconciled with that? Or have I reconciled with it at all? Mm-hmm. You know, I think that that's really important. Not that I'm so focused on the past. Uh, in my work, I don't like to focus on the past, but I think that identifying those things can help us make new decisions in the future. 
Yeah. So in my experience, a lot of athletes have gone through a lot of traumatic situations where they were able to use sport as a scapegoat or an escape. Yeah. Right. I mean, especially a lot of our black folks like, you know, left really terrible situations in the hood to get out and go play sports. You know what I mean? Like I, I would ride a couple of my best friends, like, to and from practice, like from Homewood in Pittsburgh, like, mm -hmm. and if they didn't have sport, like they were getting shot. Like I, I, had, I had friends in high school that, that had bullet wounds and I'm like, the amount of trauma that so many athletes experience, especially the ones that make, make it to the best level, like a lot of it is suppressed mm -hmm. until the sport ends and they hang it up. And then now, I'm, I'm processing that, you know, yeah. I have all this, these emotions, or I have, you know, I have family coming up to me and they're asking me for something, but I haven't even processed what that family member and I experienced when I was 10, yeah. you know, I haven't even learned to own my voice with that family member. I haven't learned what it's like to be an adult really in my family anymore. You know, well, that's, a, that's a great point because I talk about something called emotional blackmail where um, you know, family mm. members will make you feel guilty yeah. uh, for not taking care of them or not, you know, yeah. splurging on them because of the things that they came up together with. Like I was supporting you when, you know, you know, people were trying to recruit you to, you know, go down the wrong path. I was the one taking you to practice. I was the one doing this. And because they never communicated or never got in touch with that, they always feel like they're owed. Like they always feel right. like they can right. never say no. And that's that's just one of the many reasons why, you know, different athletes from all different all demographics, you know, unfortunately find themselves in some financial trouble. But I appreciate you bringing that up. I, I think it's huge. I, I think I mean, I thought like we could talk the whole episode on that topic like mm -hmm. that. I, I see that so often where, um, you know, as human beings, we can sometimes give from a place of where we want to give so that we can receive something. Yeah just talked about this like 15 minutes ago, like if we're giving in order to receive something, we're in that relationship to gain, not to give. We're not, we're not really giving Can from you a genuine that place. For the audience, please. Yeah, if we're in a relationship to gain something from giving, we're not really there to give. Mm -hmm. We're trying to gain. Yeah. We're trying to fill something in ourselves. And to do that, we give, yeah. you know? It's one of the like, it's one of the biggest double-edged swords I think in the human psyche yeah. is like, you know, uh, Uncle Uncle Joe wants to give to me. He wants to send me fifty bucks every every week, right? So that I can like you know ride the bus or whatever to go to practice, yeah. right? For instance, just as some example. Yeah. But is Joe giving me that because he really wants to give it, or is he giving it because he wants to be in my life? Yeah. And he sees potential in me, yeah. or because he he thinks that I'll take care of him when he gets older. Yeah. You know, I think that often money gets mixed in with love, you yeah. know, money gets mistaken for love and guilt and shame gets intermixed into that and debt. One of the like most excruciating things in the body to feel is the feeling of debt. Like I, I yeah. owe somebody something. Yeah. In, you know? in the body and in real life, you know, you try yeah. to avoid that at all costs. Yeah. So I, I, I think like the antidote to that is like, you know, if there's an athlete listening to this right now, I, I think that every athlete listening can take it upon themselves to lead from example. And every moment, every relationship you're in, if you're not giving from an authentic place, yeah. if you're giving from guilt, or if you feel like you should, or you're supposed to do that, and you're not just giving from the goodness of your heart, it doesn't matter who it is, family, friends, hmm. uh, buying someone dinner, you know, buying a date dinner. If you're just giving it to get something, get acknowledgement, pay back a debt, you know, yeah. that doesn't feel good for anybody involved, you know? Yeah. That's not really love. I think I, I think love is giving unconditionally, like giving without any expectations. Yeah. And that's hard to come by, unfortunately, in our in our society. And so I think if athletes are listening, I think you can lead by example. Mm -hmm. Like take one thing away from this is like you can lead with love without expecting a penny or a second of someone's time. No. I think that's true giving. 
So how, 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 from the perspective of an athlete that feels like they're getting pulled all over the place, you know, you got to commit to, you know, playing at a high level, you got to provide for your family, you got to, you know, you know, spend accordingly, uh, you got to take, how do you make sure you're centered in that, in that process of, all right, love unconditionally, lead by example, but at the same time, you know, you have to protect yourself and make sure you're thinking long term. Right. That, that's a double edged sword I mentioned. You know, it, it does feel good to give. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we all have things we care about and we want to give to. Um, but I don't think we should give from a place of guilt or should, mm -hmm. you know. And so how do you feel that? How do you know what that is? I, I think you have to be in touch with your emotions. Mm -hmm. You actually have to feel like you know, pause when you're about to make a payment or you're about to you know, say yes to something. Actually feel in your body like do you does that feel good in your gut? Yeah. Yeah. So it's always trusting your intuition. It's trusting your intuition, man. Yeah. So uh, is there any practices? Obviously, you know, if they want to connect with you, they can. But is there any like questions that they should be asking themselves? Any like uh, practices that they can do to like, all right, to help me with my relationship with money, uh, I'm going to do this. Or is to help me understand how I can communicate better about finances, I need to do this. Like, what mm -hmm. are some practices that you would, you know, recommend? Yeah, th this really comes back to like filling up your cup first. Mm -hmm. There's that old adage, maybe you've heard it, like you can't pour out and give from an empty cup. Yeah. And so that means financially, obviously, that also means mentally and emotionally, you know? And so yeah. I think there's a couple of ways you can do that. One, when you get paid, make sure you're not just paying yourself right now, but you're paying your future self. Love that. Right? Yeah. You know, I'm sure you talk about that a ton on this podcast. Um, but then think about that emotionally. So at the beginning of the day, my girlfriend, she wants me to make her coffee in the morning. And then I make mm -hmm. myself like this little like it's mud water. It's like a coffee replacement. Oh, I heard about those. Yeah, it's good. Okay. It's bad. I, it, it, it tastes terrible, but you got to you got to doctor yeah. it up if you want. Um, but anyways, so I'll make I'm making her coffee. I'm making my mud water. And sometimes I, I notice that like I kind of do that out of like I should, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll even fill up her coffee before I fill up mine, you know, like I'll pour up. And so I, I found myself focusing more on her than on me and my space, like my time, like that first two hours of the day, it's like, it's dark out still. Like I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm about to go journal. I'm about to go meditate and pray, about to do some breath work, like whatever it is, it's not a yeah. whole bunch of stuff. But like symbolically, I also will fill up my mud water first and then I will make her coffee. Yeah. It just reminds me that I'm taking care of myself so that I can take care of her, you know? No, I completely agree. I mean, you know, if you're on an airplane, the hostess says, make sure you put your mask on first before you take care of others. And it's simply, yeah. like you said, you can't take care. Uh, you can't drink from an empty cup. Uh, right. And it's not to say that you're not, you know, considerate or you're not sympathetic to your girlfriend or your partner mm -hmm. or whoever it may be. Um, it's just that in order to continue, continuously do that over the course of a day or over the course of a month or yeah. over the course of plenty of years, you have to make sure that you're good first and foremost to continue to do that in whatever right. aspect in your life that you're trying to do. Right. And, and yeah, I, I can give, you know, all sorts of like tangible things to do to like fill your cup, mm -hmm. whether it's Go on, go on walks. I think a walk in the morning is one of the most powerful things just to get out in the nature, man, just to smell yeah. some fresh air. Um, whenever I list off these things, the last thing I want someone to do is go and do all of them. Yeah. Because that's never going to work. I, me and my girlfriend tried to create like the perfect morning routine a couple yeah. years ago. It was just like the biggest mess. It was like journal <laughs> for five minutes on this, this, and this, and then meditate for five minutes. And then visualize yeah. something like if you really go down the rabbit hole of things you're, you, you're supposed to do in the morning yeah. like you won't start your day until one o'clock exactly it's like start you with know? one you know you start with start one with something really simple man whatever feels good for you and then mm -hmm. yeah I, I i just think checking in with yourself if, if i was to give you one tool the guys that are listening um it's it's just checking in with yourself and so i use a formula called the rock formula Mm -hmm. It was created by Owen Marcus. It's just, it's just a coined concept. It's relax, open up and connect R O C. And all that means is whether that's like just you and me talking right now, or that's, you know, me meditating or something, 
relax, find some way to slow down. Like I just oh. did actually, I, you just probably noticed I, I took a big deep breath before I started talking. Yeah. It could be something as simple as that. Relax. The second piece is opening up to my experience so much. Like we're talking, talking, talking. I can find myself just kind of just going, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just saying whatever's on my head. But can I open up to my emotional experience and my physical body? Those are two really connected things that I think go over overlooked often. Yeah. Is an emotional state and a physical state. So check in the with body, your the body keeps score. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Vessel van or something van vessel, right? Yeah. Um, great book. So yes. Yeah, so check in with your body, how it's feeling. Um, what if you feel heat, tension, um, sensation anywhere? And then what emotions are you experiencing? The five core emotions I, I use are joy, anger, sadness, shame, and fear. Um, most experiences can kind of be bucketed in those things, but you know, you can also be experiencing one, two, three, or all of them at, at one time. But I think it's really important and really powerful to pick up that phone and listen to what you're currently experiencing, just to check in with it. And then the third step is to connect. You can either you know, connect with, by writing that down in a journal, with a daily check-in, or you could just share right now. Like I could share with you, Amobi, like as I relax and slow down right now, like I'm not just talking really like fast. I'm actually really excited and grateful to be here. I'm, I'm really joyful that we finally made this happen. You know, like yeah. I feel connected to you. I'm just, I, I love that we're riffing back and forth. This, I'm enjoying this conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. That's my emotional experience. That, I think that creates connection between us. It could, but it also connects me with like the present moment. It gets me present to what's really important. No, I think that's that's really important. And I, I love where this conversation is going because we haven't even talked about, you know, uh, all right, what's the difference between, you know, APY versus APR or, you know, mm -hmm. compound interest. And we're just, the basics of understanding yourself first can lead to so much more when it comes to, you know, financial literacy, uh, self-improvement, personal development. In your, in your line of work, you know, doing some research, you talk about the concept of needs versus wants. Can you explain that as it relates to athletes and, you know, specifically with, you know, career transition, obviously money management, and uh, personal development. Yeah, well, you know, I'm gonna try and relay this back to like finance, but when I when I really say like needs and wants, I think of, I can relate this to finance, I definitely can. But like, I think of like needs and wants as like, how often is a man actually asked like what he wants? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's not every day that a man or, you know, an athlete is, that's on a team that's competing. Yeah. He's asked like what they want. It's mostly and, and for, what, for context. You only work with men right now at this moment. Predominantly, right? yeah. Okay, yeah. predominantly. So just wanted yeah. to give some context to the the audience when we yeah. reference men. So appreciate you. Yeah, and and so but, but a lot of what I talk about with men relates to athletes in general. Uh huh. Just kind of coincidentally, and so like athletes, you're usually focused on like the team, right? And mm -hmm. it we often will sacrifice ourselves our needs and our wants for the team. And so I think being in touch with our needs and our wants is really important. So asking ourselves consciously, what do I need right now? You know, like what do I really need? Like you might actually need a break. You know what I mean? You might need a mental break. You might need a day off. You might need to go do some recovery. Um, you might want a massage. You know, you might want that, um, I don't know that that new iPhone, right? But do you need that? You know, I, I I can relate to those things, I guess. I I just see it as um, a lot of us do confuse those two things. Um, and if you don't actually ask yourself them separately, they can get really blurred. You know. Yeah, that's fact. That makes a lot of sense. I appreciate that. Oh, so let's let's get into it. Like the the structure. You know, we talk about you talk about investing in yourself, uh, making sure your worth, uh, making sure you know your worth. And then thinking of your mind as an asset, you know, this is straight from the Quentin, to, uh, the Quentin special. So I'm, I'm taking it from your, your case. Can we break down each of those, um, like mantras? Yeah. So, so the, the, what was the last one you, you mentioned? All right. Uh, thinking of your mind as an asset. Think of your mind as an asset. Yeah. yeah perfect. So thinking of your mind as an asset is. It's a concept of like, do I want to invest in, I'd love to hear your perspective on this. 
you can invest in Bitcoin, you can invest in real estate, you can invest in stocks, right? Um, what would it look like to take a gamble on yourself as well? I love that one. Yeah. That's really hard for a lot of people, a lot of people to do, you know, invest in their own mindset, yeah. invest in a new skill, not just a diploma or like a degree, maybe it's a degree, right? Yeah. But maybe it's just something, maybe it's dedicating time to, you know, going through a course online that's really cheap. Maybe it's investing in support, like in a mentor. Yeah. You know, I, I think when we start to see our money as energy we can give to ourselves or to give to a, an asset, I think um, you start to see the mind as an asset, really. No, you know? I love that because I think a lot of times as athletes, just our competitive nature, we're looking for, all right, how can we use the capital to invest in something to make us more money? When mm -hmm. if you start with investing in yourself, yeah. then the sky is the limit because yeah. you, you are, you know, you are your best bet. You are your best asset. And whether it's learning like a new skill, like you said, whether it's mm -hmm. investing in your body and your mind. So you have, you mm -hmm. have more clarity on for your performance whether it's investing in, you know, workshops, seminars, networking events, so you can yeah. connect with other people, iron sharpens iron. Like mm -hmm. we do all these things in sport where it's, you know, you invest in a physical therapist, you invest in a, a specialist right. coach, you invest in, you know, you know, all these different things. But when it comes to our mind, you know, you're working out everything else, but your mind, it, it, it's, it's not, it's not, 100%. it's not productive over the long term. And I always talk about, you know, like, what's your education versus entertainment relationship? Like we can invest in like having fun and stuff, but at the same time, how are we investing in our education? And like you said, it doesn't have to be school. It could be, you know, going, taking 10 minutes and watching a YouTube video on something you're passionate about, mm -hmm. um, different things like that. And that's why I wanted to touch on thinking of your mind as an asset, mm -hmm. um, because athletes don't do enough of that. And if we do more of that, then we realize how much power we have through our sport, you know, whether it's, you know, we've been doing public appearances and, you know, interviews. All right. I want to translate. I want to transition into the corporate space. I'm good in public speaking. I'm good in communication because I was doing it um, mm -hmm. in my sport. But because we don't know how to think of ourselves as assets, we're not able to translate that. You know, yeah. you know, a bunch of people, the fact that you were able to play two sports and go to a top school, that's organization. That's time management. Those are valuable skills in yeah corporate and entrepreneurship space that people may not be able to translate because we simply don't invest in ourselves or look at ourselves as an asset. I, I love that you brought in like time and money because those are two kinds of energies, you know, mm -hmm. like who you give your, your time to, what you give your money to, um, because it doesn't need to cost something. It, it could be for me, like actually the last two years of building a business, I've learned so much about running a business. Like, yeah. I feel like if you gave me an idea tomorrow, I could, I could get it spun up in like a month. You know what I mean? Yeah. Based on what I've learned over the last two years with trial and error. Facts. I think that's one thing that, you know, as a former athlete was hard to get my head around, like being mm -hmm. a beginner at something was so, you know, strange and so yeah. obscure. Um, and scary that it was scary to try something new and fail and look yeah. bad and learn. And I think sometimes we forget that those, those failures are really lessons and they're actually getting us somewhere where in two years, I'm going to feel like I have a, I basically feel like I have an MBA, you know, yeah. in online business. Like it's, it's just crazy how the mind works where that, that was an investment of my time. Yeah. That was an investment of two years of my time that like now like that that's shrunk in two years now down into a month Fact. just like that you know and you wouldn't have got that experience unless you you started exactly exactly yeah, yeah. so uh real quick let's talk about you know what are some investments that you've made you know as an athlete into the entrepreneurship space that you know athlete entrepreneurs that's the new wave now you know mm -hmm. athletes have to think of themselves as businesses or they're not mm -hmm. you know progressing into this new era what mm -hmm. are some ways that you would recommend for athletes to you know start investing in themselves or start thinking of themselves as you know a business who a lot of different things i mean um 
I think we can obviously talk about like the personal brand, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's, that's number one. Um, and being able to leverage that, I think, um, you, I love asking this question of like, what, if you were to give a Ted talk, what would you give it on? That's a great conversation starter. Yeah, it yeah. is. It, it really, it helps, it helps people actually understand like, not only what do I know pretty well, but what yeah. do I, I love talking about, you know, like, mm -hmm. what could I be at a party talking about for hours and hours and hours? Yeah. Passionate about, you know, and I think if we can, if you can do that, you can develop that kind of like mental capital. Mm -hmm. um, and you can tap into that part of yourself that um, that is developing beyond sport, that is investing in something beyond just who I am as an athlete. No, that's what it's all about. No, I appreciate you for sharing that because um, a lot of times, you know, we focused on, you know, we're so focused on the sport and what we do, how we can be best perform. And everything we talked about was off the field. But mm -hmm. I feel like once you find that clarity, and I, I touched on this earlier, it'll help you not only uh, on the field, but off the field and the whole encompassing spirit. Um, what else do I have? Um, in terms of in terms of like strategies, if you were to do it like all over again, you know, Northwestern, two sport, Letterman, uh, top of your class, what steps would you take besides starting your business earlier? Hmm. I would have. Oh man, this is gonna sound crazy. It's gonna sound crazy, but I probably I might take some heat for this. But I would probably have invested if I had to go into debt for it. Who cares? Invest in support right off the bat. Okay. Like whether that's like a business incubator, whether that's a yeah. business coach, whether that's a mentor that I can pay for their time and their acumen. Um, invest in something right off the bat because you know as athletes we're, we're so used to, i mean as a college athlete you know and a lot of professional sports like you don't get paid that much you know what i yeah. mean like we basically lived in the under, under the poverty level in chicago when i was in at northwestern you know like it's yeah. you don't get paid that much um to live so investing anything after sport feels really really scary but i really do think like you do have to spend money to make money yeah, and that play. money, if I would have spent that early on and learned about business right up front, I would have built so much more confidence then by starting it earlier and investing in something um, than I ever could have on my own, which I tried yeah. to do on my own for forever. You know, Googling, yeah. watching this, reading this, thinking about what I was going to do and then ripping up the plan, you know, and then starting yeah. over, you know, like, I think no, just I having a, another set of eyes on it. Like having a mentor of some sort is just yeah. so, so crucial. You definitely have to have someone that can help you stay accountable. Well, that's first and foremost, a mentor that can all, a mentor that can help guide you, a sponsor that can help not only guide you, but then put you in those positions for you to blossom on your own. And we, we have it in everything else. Why not in business or whatever else we do? So uh, I, I completely agree with you. I think in order not to say that, you won't make it to where you're destined to go, but instead of like having to stop for gas and, you know, you might, you know, get a nail on your tire, you, you know, it's someone's showing you, you know, the ways to get there. Maybe yeah. you're still going to have to, you're going to still find your own battles, but they're showing you kind of the, the path. And obviously you're going to have to complete the path on your own and it's going to require work. Uh, but I appreciate that answer because I think it's so true. I'm yeah. And, 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 to build off of that, I think that that also the ethos of what I'm trying to say is like surround yourself with people that are also on the same path as you, you mm -hmm. know, because I think, you know, as team sport athletes, like we do really do well with others that are surrounding us, you know, in a team environment. Yeah. And if you're going to be an entrepreneur, um, surround yourself with other, other entrepreneurs, whether that's, you know, join a co-working space or join, join an incubator, like I was mentioning. Um, find a mentor, find a group of people that are all up to the same thing because um, not everyone wants that. Fact. A lot of people don't, you know? And now and, affect your judgment 
in some things. It does. Yeah, yeah. It totally affected mine. Like I didn't have many, many people in my life that really were going to start a business, you know, mm -hmm. had some people that would talk about it, but then it, it never ended up happening. You know, I was yeah. the only one that ended, ended up doing it, you know? <laughs> and I think that's uh, being surrounded by the entrepreneurial spirit and by people that have done it already. Yeah. Like you, I, I'm a big believer in like surrounding yourself around people that you can mentor, people that you can aspire to, like that are, you know, your mentees, like you're a mentee. Yeah. And then just people that are, that are up to the same things as you, you know, I think having a, a good split, a good even balance of all that is just so crucial. No, I love that. Uh, in closing, what, what, what would you want to leave the audience with? You know, obviously you got a lot of amazing things. I want to appreciate you. I want to show thank you for you uh, for coming on and taking time. Uh, but what, what would you want to leave the audience with? Hmm. Man, I, I think it's really, it's no, it's know your worth. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think knowing your worth and knowing your value as someone who's like, especially as an athlete, like an elite athlete, like you've pushed yourself to limits that no one can even fathom. Yeah. And knowing your worth means knowing that essentially like your, your self-worth is going to dictate your net worth. Right. Yeah. And you are worthy of having money. You are worthy of saving money and investing money and having that money grow not only, you know, inside your head, right. And, you know, mindset wise, but also in the tangible world, like I, it sounds corny, but you're worthy of that. You know, I think that's, that's something that that guys really need to hear. Yeah. A uh, quote that I was always given is whatever you think you're worth charge double. Uh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Just, just always value yourself higher because you never know um, how, strong the mind is when you think positively about yourself versus negatively and you have like you know kind of reservations about you as yourself um you know you got to have that confidence where can people find you quentin if they want to connect with you uh once again thank you guys so uh, thank you so much i think uh we were able to learn a lot i love the fact that you know we learn so much about money without even talking about money uh, i yeah. think that's that's what it's all about at the end of the day finding sure. different perspectives of how athletes can learn um, about money management, better career decisions, you know, making the transition because frugal is all about, you know, being efficient. And if you're efficient with your mind, body, and soul, um, you'll be efficient in sport. You'll be efficient with your money. You'll be efficient with your relationships and, uh, appreciate you taking the time, but where can people find you? I love that, man. Efficiency is the key. I'm a huge <laughs> efficiency nerd. Um, so people can find me. My website is q-williams.com. I have a free quiz that's on there. If you want to check it out, um, it's just go to q-williams.com slash quiz and you can access this, this free like 10 question quiz that'll help help you identify like what your athlete archetype is in sport and out of sports. So you can apply those skills like we're talking about, like apply all the grit and the leadership skills that you developed as a leader, as a team captain and apply that in the real world. So go to, um, you can also just go to athletearchetype.com. You can also find it there. Um, Perfect. And we're going to have all that in the show notes for those that are interested. So make sure you guys tap in, uh, you know, Quentin, someone that's very experienced in the space that can help you tremendously um, with your personal growth. Yeah. And then, and then Instagram's the other one. So um, my IG is Q Williams, double underscore. It's Q Perfect. Williams. And you go live yeah. weekly, huh? Yeah, just about. Yeah, I go. I, I, I've been trying to go live about every Friday. I'll get better with that. But yeah, every Friday morning, I'll be live. Yeah, most definitely. So make sure you guys tap in. You guys, valuable information that can definitely help you. Uh, but Quentin, thank you so much once again. I'm sure we're going to be connecting very soon. Uh, appreciate you for making this work out. Um, if you guys are listening, please kindly leave a review, rate it. It helps us continue to grow. We're at, I think we're at 200 next episode um if am not, i the, am I the 200 close. that would I be think crazy you might be the 200th episode we're gonna have to tap in with will for that will is like our that. wonderful head of sound uh i just gave him that role but he, he's he's tremendous with our podcast stuff so uh we're gonna have to give you something if, if you're the 200th episode but if i not, want a t-shirt man <laughs> I'm, i'll make it <laughs> we got you um but that's it ladies and gentlemen we'll see you guys uh next week appreciate cool. y'all